All right, Ben Porcia, top velocity.net, doing a pitch analysis here. Jonathan going to pair him up with a sow. Take Jonathan here in his leg lift. Take a sow here into his leg lift. Okay. It's just, it's become more conventional lately to really push the hips out coming into your leg lift. As you can see, Jonathan, really as he's coming up, he starts rotating hard to push and lead with the with the hips. The thing is, is I'm more focused on the force vector. That ankle to knee is our direction of force when we start to build power through the drive leg. And as you start leading forward, once the lift leg comes up, as you start leading forward, we want to make sure that that force vector, that knee is coming with that front hip as we can see here with a sow as he comes into the peak of his lift he starts to shift the momentum it's not so much a push of the hips as it is just a momentum shift and we can see the force vector being you know is a better indication of that so this ankle to knee here we can see is starting to come downward as that front hip is leading and you can see with Jonathan he's just pushing the hip out but staying vertical back here um, which isn't going to ultimately build as much momentum initially in the delivery as a sow. <clears throat> okay, so just remember when you come up, don't so much rotate and push, but start moving and specifically take your force vector down with you as you move forward. Because you can see you kind of you lift up and you kind of like coil. And then what happens is that the look at the lift leg, it's like a spring. Wherever there's an action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. It, sw it swivels back and then it just springs out right here. Boom. And then shoots past your front hip and you're still very vertical back here. So watch a sow. He, he's just focused on that linear move. His whole body moving together kind of as a single unit. That force vector is a good indicator that everything's moving. We can see that drive leg knee coming down, staying with that front hip. The lift leg is kind of just being suspended there, holding back as the momentum is being built in the body. And then the lift leg knee just starts to get out past the front hip as he gets into this more linear force vector position because, you know, this becomes, you know, a very challenging position for you to hold and stay stable because uh, you're putting your your drive leg or you're abducting your drive leg so high um, you're really kind of pushing the limits of your hip mobility so at this point though he's in a great position now to where he does have a lot of speed the lift leg is starting to get out which is, means it's time to slow down but he's in a great position back here to really explode before the front foot leg goes down if we look at Jonathan He's very vertical still, and when that lift leg knee is breaking the front hip. So we know that more of the speed's coming through the leg than the body at this point because that force vector is a good indication uh, of what is going on with the entire uh, momentum of the body through the stride. Okay, so at this point, we're going to have to take Jonathan to go, you know, he's going to have to continue to reach out and open up to get this down in, in linear and he finally gets it linear here but he's so far extended out front he's starting to get really extended off the drive leg weight is starting to shift too far forward now um, he's kind of throwing off that that balance or that uh, you know that good stable position sitting over the drive leg so he can really build power through there and really and you know now what's going to happen is he's going to just put down and, and whatever momentum that slung him out from that lift leg um, as it moved out past the front hip, that momentum is going to uh, kind of pull him off the mound and not be so much of a drive. We can, it's just kind of, he's being pulled off by the momentum in the front leg as it goes down. And you can see here, it, it's, it's, there's a lot of force pulling that back hip down. There's no driving forces there. So we see a lot of force coming in this direction here. Now watch this out. It's going to be just a very different approach. He's going to stay close as much as he can and then move, start to move into extension, start to power through the back side. As the front side opens, he moves into that extension, knee extension, ankle extension, as we see there, and then that's having a tremendous effect on the hip rotation. As we can see, the hips are rotating before the front foot lands, which is really 
key for high velocity pitchers this is what they do really well they can get their hips rotating before front foot strike and that is a product of the leg drive that's a product of triple extension pushing extension into the knee into that ankle and then ultimately that's going to kick through to the hip flexor specifically as the front leg stabilizes and those hips slam open and this is we know is characteristic of high velocity pitchers they get these hips open early and faster uh, post front foot strike than low velocity guys which we see here with Jonathan that front foot is coming down and we don't see the hip rotation coming through the back side that we did here with the sow so when he lands then we have to wait for the hips to come through and then you can see finally there the foot gets fully extended um, the drive leg everything gets fully extended but notice what's going on at the same time that the hip is finally pushing through we see the shoulders and the torso moving with it we know that's not characteristic high velocity pitchers. High velocity pitchers, they open the hips while the arm is cocking. So you'll see the hips opening, arm cocking. Hips opening, arm cocking. This is characteristic high velocity pitchers. That's the um, essence of hip short separation. That's the timing of hip to shoulder separation, the movement of hip to shoulder separation, the opening of the hips in the front foot as the arm cocks up into the throwing position, starting what 3x pitching calls the throwing phase. So then we get that optimal hip to shoulder separation that we're not seeing here with Jonathan because he's too slow with his lower half because he was too late getting that force vector linear. Um, and, and therefore he landed with uh, more of a dragging force on the back hip and not a driving force which is what high velocity pitchers do which allows them to get the hips open into the cocked position at front foot strike okay so this is really 3x pitching this is when we've done the work you know the MPA their case study case study of 2005-2006 proved that 80 percent of a pitcher's potential velocity comes from this one component and, and if we haven't been able to implement much hip shoulder separation at this component it's really going back to the drawing board it's really working everything from lift to front foot strike to that component and trying to ultimately put the body in this position now to put this body in this position Jonathan it's going to take both uh, the speed and the power uh, from you as an athlete to be able to implement that uh, ultimately through the drive leg put your body into these positions and have the explosive power to implement it uh, and at the same time of course you know you got to understand the movements you got to feel the movements you got to know how to implement the movements put the movements into your delivery and ultimately we got to get them to a point where we can do them at an aut autonomous uh, level to where we're not really thinking about it because that's the only way it's going to uh, be efficient and ultimately uh, have a, a significant effect on the ball at the end. Uh, so you can see once we do this, once we are able to implement these key components of high velocity pitchers, triple extension before front foot strike, the hip rotations during the cocking, uh, the arm cocking, creates that optimal hip shoulder separation. Once we are able to do this, we put ourselves in a high velocity category. And at that point, we have the torque, the torsion in our body that that's going to, as long as we stay stable on this front leg, that is going to then accelerate the forces uh, up the body by rotating the shoulders higher than the, the, the rate of speed of the hips. And that's going to push the chest and the forward trunk tilt and the arm into optimal external rotation. And then the arm is going to then explode into early internal rotation pronation uh, as we continue to extend and stabilize the front side through the drive leg. Um, and, and then you can see her sow finishes perfectly in that high velocity category. Now as far as Jonathan, <clears throat> we see the hips and shoulders rotating together. We don't have that torque, that torsion, that force multiplier that's more to multiplying the forces up the body. We can see he's getting late external rotation even though it's not great footage. But we can see the blur in front of the face. We look back at a sow here. When the arm hit full external rotation, he was behind the head which is common of high velocity pitchers. And then Jonathan gets that late internal rotation, Masao gets that early internal rotation with good front leg extension. We don't see, we see very poor front leg extension here. So, you know, Jonathan is just baby, basically, you know, being able to learn how to move um, as explosively and as quick as these uh, high velocity pitchers at the right time. And, you know, that's, that's the complexity of a high velocity pitcher. And that's why it really is an elite uh, position. It's an elite movement it's um, considered the you know it has some of the fastest body speeds in all of sports 
So it's something that is very challenging, but ultimately we can get there just because with the 3x pitching, it, it ha it's a complete comprehensive approach here that will ultimately seamlessly show you how um, to get there from uh, where you are as a low velocity pitcher. So, you know, hope this video helps. Uh, if you have any questions on the approach or, or on your issues specifically, please post them here and, and I wish you the best.